In this video, I'm going to show you how to use render caching to improve both playback and render times. There may be some facets that you're already familiar with and maybe something that will be new for you. When computationally intensive effects are applied to your timeline that cannot be rendered in real time, playback and render performance suffers. There are a variety of reasons why playback might be poor. Looking at the GPU status display will help you determine the cause. A green dot indicates performance is good. A red dot indicates performance is poor. The accompanying number tells you your actual playback frame rate. This isn't good. It should be playing back at 24 frames per second. Render caching addresses this issue by identifying computationally intensive clips and pre-renders them while your computer idles. During playback, these shots are played from your cache rather than being computed in real time. Why is this significant? With render caching, you can enjoy responsive performance in DaVinci Resolve even on older or less powerful computers. The playback render cache menu has three options, none, smart, and user. None is pretty self-explanatory, so we're gonna focus on smart and user. I'll set my render cache to smart. These red lines in my timeline indicate which clips have been automatically marked for caching. These include processor-intensive codecs such as H.265, speed and retime effects, fusion compositions, processor-intensive titles, generators, and transitions, and the hardest one to say, open FX effects applied either on the color or edit page. If I leave my computer to idle, these red lines will gradually change blue as Resolve creates its cache. Now I can enjoy smooth playback. The render cache works a little different in the color page. Instead of caching the entire clip, it caches the output of individual nodes. For example, this node has the lens blur effect applied. You can tell it's cached because it's blue. Take note though, if you make a color grade adjustment upstream of your cached node that's to the left of it, it will need to re-render its cache. Because of that, it's good to think about where you place your cache nodes in your node tree. But with today's example, this is the best place for my lens blur node. There's another node in my node tree with an open FX effect. You can also see that it's been cached. Adjusting downstream nodes, that's nodes to the right, won't affect this node. If I adjust the next node in my tree, node six, it doesn't need to be recached. As mentioned before, all fusion compositions are marked for caching in smart mode, but color clips are only cached if they contain particular effects. And even then it's done on the node level. So if a color grade is causing poor performance, it is possible to manually enable caching. Let me show you. In the edit page, right click on the clip and you can force the entire clip to be cached. Or alternatively, in the color page, you can force specific nodes to be cached. Right click on the node and go to node cache and select on. You can also disable node caching here too. It's not necessary to mark every node for caching, only the ones that are causing poor playback. User render cache mode works exactly the same way, but instead of resolve choosing which clips to cache, you do. Enable it by selecting user. Using the node and clip caching controls, you can mark what gets cached. There's also a separate option in the menu for controlling the caching of fusion compositions. Interestingly, it's possible to partially enable smart caching while in user mode. Head to project settings, master settings, optimize media and render cache. Automatic caching can be turned on for transitions, composites and fusion effects. While we are in project settings, let's check out the rest of the caching options. This option controls how long Resolve needs to idle before starting to cache renders in the background. Cache files location controls where your render cache is stored. And finally, the render cache format dropdown allows you to choose the format of your render cache. Not only can render cache speed up your playback performance while editing and color grading, it can also speed up your final render. On the deliver page when configuring your final render, Check out this option in the advanced settings tab. Use render cached images. Instead of having to render every shot from scratch, my render will now use the render cache. 
But if you're going to use this option, it's definitely worth giving some consideration to your render cache format settings, especially if you're going to use this to deliver your final render, not just for previews. You don't want to create a quality bottleneck. I'm going to adjust my cache render format settings to ProRes 4444. This feature is particularly helpful if you need to keep re-rendering because of changes, but use caution and consider how it fits into your own workflow. Finally, how to manage your render cache. When a clip is changed, Resolve will automatically delete its old cache. Manage cache data allows you to see the size of the cache associated with each project. To delete a project's cache, mark it and hit clear cache. Deleting cache files for the currently loaded project is even easier. In the same menu, choose from all, unused, or selected clips. All deletes all the media in the cache to reset every single cache clip. Unused is for any clips that are no longer in your timeline. And selected clips. You can make a manual selection of any clips in your timeline that you want the cache deleted. Whether it's you're working on an older computer or you're dealing with computationally intensive clips, Render caching can get you smooth playback in real time. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more.